Welcome to the Woodshop. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a project that's in issue 266, and it's a demi loom. And the demi loom basically has a curved front apron, and there's many ways to do that. Um, and we've done several in the magazine in the past. However, we chose to do this one this time out of bending plywood. Um, so, a couple things on bending plywood I just want to clarify because bending plywood can come in two different types. One comes in a 4x8 sheet, and I have a little bit of diagram here I'd like to show you. One comes in a 4x8 sheet, which if you bend it will form an 8 foot tall column. And then the other comes in an 8x4 sheet, which when you bend that, it'll form a 4 foot tall column. So they designate the 8x4 and 4x8 to get whatever direction the bending ability is in the plywood. We bought an 8x4 sheet, and actually we bought 3 8 inch thick material. You can find this at your hardwood lumber dealer that carries plywood um, or online. There are sources online that we found for this plywood uh, that we're going to use today. So, uh, a little bit about the form. Uh, basically, I made this out of MDF. This can be made out of uh, a particle board or any substrate like that. That's um, you know something that you're going to waste pretty much. So something inexpensive. Um, and what I did to do the form is I basically laid out my top piece and got it sanded perfectly to where I wanted it. I then glued and nailed it down to the next piece that I had cut outside the line using a flush trimming bit with my router. I cleaned that up and then proceeded down to get basically six layers of form here. Uh, I then laid out kind of some of the markings on here. One, uh, I marked out where the locations of where my notches are going to be for my legs in the front. Uh, and then um, also I made sure I had a center line because that's important when I'm bending down uh, the plywood. Um, I have um, five strips of bending plywood right here. Um, I cut two at 54 inches and then I cut three at 56 inches and then I cut myself a piece of veneer at 4 by 56 okay. The outer layer is, is purely for a call to kind of help hold all this sandwich together okay. You don't need that you're not going to glue that in place. The uh, next step you need to do too is you'll need to find a center line and mark that. Uh, on all the pieces and that way you can register that center line because I'm going to clamp this by starting in the middle lining it up with my center line on my phone. So let's lay out those and get this glued up and clamped in the form. Okay guys so I've got my pieces cut here. Um, I've got them laid out in the order they're going to go on the form. Um, I'm going to start gluing these up and I'm going to use uh, Type Bond 3 because it's got a little bit longer setup time. Um, a good veneer glue uh, is fine too. What you want is make sure is don't use a glue that uh, you have a short setup time, okay? Um, it, it takes a little time to get all this glue on and get it rolled out. And I do like to use a roller. Um, you can use a spreader, that's fine, but I like to use these little foam rollers because I can wash them out easily at the end and they spread the glue really, really well. Um, these are available at uh, many retailers, um, hobby shops, and uh, even veneer suppliers will carry these type of rollers. As with any joint, you're gluing in any woodworking situation. Don't, you want to make sure you're not going to starve the joint from glue, but also we don't need a huge mess. You can see that I've laid wax paper down underneath my form to try to avoid getting too much glue spread all over my workbench.
Okay, so now that I've got everything glued up, I'm going to line up my line up my lines. You can see that that glue is starting to tack tack up nicely. And I'm going to line that up with the center line on my form, and I'm going to clamp this in place. One thing I want to mention is if you if you get really sloppy with the glue, or you have a tendency to be sloppy, sometimes I do. Sometimes I will coat this outer form with some packing tape. Um, it, to kind of make sure you're not getting that thing stuck to your veneer. So what I'm doing is I'm just simply clamping this in place, all right? So I'm kind of holding them so they're not going to be shifting around. And this is when I take a band clamp and a couple extra sets of hands or something like this is not a bad thing to have. I'm kind of working this around. And then you're going to tighten this up. Try to keep the wax paper underneath there as best as possible. And I'm putting that on the bottom if you, know, if you noticed, because I am going to add another one that goes across the top. But the clamp kind of helps, this big clamp kind of helps hold everything in place while you're doing this. And then obviously once you get it close, you can start cranking that down with the wrench or however your band clamps work. You want to make sure that all the layers are flat down against the workbench. If you have to, take your mallet out and make sure they pound it down. I am allowing for extra, extra width so I can clean that up later. My apron is only going to be three and a half inches wide, and I've got four inch material. And I'm pressing these together, making sure I don't have any gaps. And I like to just stick this clamp back on after the fact just to make sure I've got that top cinch down tight too. So I let this sit in the form. Um, it's, it's probably a good thing to let this sit for, for a day or an overnight and then remove it the next day. It's a great way of bending. Uh, bending plywood is, is not something you uh, necessarily may have thought of. I guess there's other ways of doing this, but this is a pretty easy, pretty simple way. Um, the plywood itself doesn't seem very structurally sound by itself, but once you glue it to many layers, it's pretty amazing how sturdy and durable this is.